everybody, Ben Nelson, the Everyday Real Estate Investor here. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of the podcast. Appreciate the support. And again, hope everything that you're hearing on here is beneficial and inspiring and uh, helping you take action in your real estate investing. That's really the, the point here is to make sure that you're you're doing the things that you have in your mind to do and not just keeping them in your thoughts, uh, that you're encouraged to do that, that you're pushed to do that that you're learning the tools to make that happen and um, that you're just, you're, you're setting those excuses aside that we all have uh, to, uh, that we can't do it, that we can't make this happen. We just don't have the knowledge. We don't have the time. We don't have the information, whatever those excuses are, setting those aside and, and making things happen. So uh, hopefully that is, this is helping you do that. Um, that's the goal. Uh, and yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it today. So um Today's going to be a little bit different. Again, if you've listened to, listened to this for a while, you know I, I kind of trend back and forth between practical market stuff, uh, strategies, uh, talking to people that have done the, the thing and have been out there and, and overcome those hurdles and trials and everything, um, and mindset and, and philosophy things, because those are just as important as having your mindset right and having... The right thought process because without that is it's very difficult um, or nearly impossible to be as successful as you could be because that's where it all starts is what's what's between you know your two ears is what what's going on in your head what is what are your belief systems what is it that you're thinking about on a regular basis uh, so to ignore those things and only talk about strategy and only talk about what's going on in the market uh, it's just not, it's not complete. It's not setting you up for to be as successful as you could because you have to make sure that your mindset is in the right place. And that if it's not, that you're making those adjustments and and doing something about it and not staying in that place and challenging yourself to, to pull yourself through that. So uh, today we are gonna talk, uh, go shift more towards that uh, mindset side of it. Uh, and I want you to hang with me here. This is, uh, you know, being thankful you know, Thanksgiving is right around the corner here just in a couple days uh, and we get to spend time together with family, hopefully, and and just kind of uh, just hang out with those that we that we love and maybe watch some football, things like that, eat a lot of food, uh, all that stuff as well. But uh, but really, it's a time um, that we should be looking at and reflecting on on thankfulness. Right. That's the point is um what are we thankful for? What's in our life that we can be thankful for? And it's really difficult. I, I know a lot of times in the hustle and bustle and with everything that's going on and challenges and hurdles and things to overcome, uh, it can get really easy to focus on those things instead of the things that we have to be thankful for. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, and I'm going to just just go over a couple things that I, I think that, uh, you know, that I'm thankful for and that we just need to remember as we're, as we're going through this season. So the first thing is, of course, uh, our loved ones, right? Those around us that support us, they 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 push us to be better. They are with us through those challenging times. They make us better people because they're pushing us to do that. And and I hope that you have that in your life. I know I have that in my life, um, and I'm very thankful and grateful for that. My wife uh, is amazing. She makes me a better person. She challenges me to be better. Um, uh, you know, to when I when I mess up, she's she's has grace. And in those areas where I where I'm not perfect, because I certainly am not perfect, um, and my wonderful kids, uh, my amazing extended family, I, I've, I'm very fortunate to have um, an amazing family. And um, you know, maybe it's not your family. Maybe you're not married. Maybe you don't have kids. Uh, but we all have people in our lives, and we or we should. You know, maybe they're just really close friends um, that are there to support us and they're to help us and they're to. to um, help us through those times that are challenging, push us to be better people, push us to be better business people, better members of the community um, and all of that. And uh, it's certainly, again, it's something that can be overlooked. We, we see them on a daily basis, you know, family, we can get, we can irritate each other, right? So, cause we're, we're always with each other. And um, no matter how much you love someone, if they're, if you're with them on a daily basis, you, you know, you're gonna rub each other the wrong way every once in a while, right? We're different people, we're, we, we don't always respond the right way to, to certain things. And so there's always some of that, right? But uh, the the point is, you know, the, you don't want to focus on those things. You want to focus on the positive. We all have someone around us that that uh, is there to do that for us. And if you don't have that, um, man, I mean, even a good friend, 
uh, a mentor, somebody that is going to push you and challenge you and and uh, and love you and be there for you and support you in whatever you are trying to do in your in your life and in your endeavors um, and that sort of thing. So that's it's. I don't want us to lose sight of it because we all say family is the most important. The are the loved ones around us are the most important, and then we spend you know hours and hours at the office and pursuing other things. Um, and we say that it's in the in the name of it's for them, right? We're trying to support our family. And there's truth in that, right? There's truth. You have to go out and you have to grind and you have to do the things that are necessary to earn income and bring, bring you know, provide financially for your family. Um, but if, it, if that overtakes you and your goals become so big that you're uh, you're so focused on that and, oh yeah, I'm doing it for my family, I'm doing it for my family, and then you turn around 10 years later, you don't even know your kids, right? Uh, that's not the that's not the goal. That's not what we want. So I just, I don't want you to lose sight of that. It's such a cliche thing, right? We instantly go to that, the, our loved ones, that's what we're grateful for. But but it, at the same time, uh, we we can really easily push that aside sometimes and in pursuit of things that are just not as important um, as that. So just something to be to be paying attention to um health hey we you know i know lots of people have uh health things they're dealing with um it's difficult to find time for that to stay uh on top of being in shape and working out and all that stuff um and so maybe you don't have perfect health but you know what you're listening to this you're breathing you're you're here on this earth still uh be 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 thankful for that be grateful for that maybe you're going through some challenges with with your health um do what you have to do. Do what you have to do. Prioritize that. Make it the the. Without health, we don't have anything, right? We spend all this time driving for wealth and for building this business and for you know having cash flow and all of these things. Well, if we sacrifice our health uh, in the meantime, it's just not worth it. You're not going to be able to enjoy it, right? You spend all this time and all this effort building this, and then in the end, you you end up worn out and. Uh, and exhausted and sick and it's just not worth it. It's not worth it to um, sacrifice your health for for that quote unquote success, right? Um, so don't wait. I mean, if this is something you need to change, don't wait. Be grateful for the health that you have. If you need to improve it, don't wait. Uh, do it now. Do it now. Make changes, that, whatever that's, whether that's your diet, whether that's working out, exercising more, uh, being more active, uh, you know, be grateful again for what where you're at, but but improve it, right? And that's and that's where we want to be with everything. Honestly, is is you know we're grateful for what we've accomplished. We're grateful for where we're at um, financially. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to stay there though. Like if you're if you're uh, in a good spot, whether you're in a good spot or a bad spot, just because you're grateful for where you're at doesn't mean that you can't push yourself to be better. Um, so uh, I just I encourage you to you know, again, health is the most is you can't even help and be there for your loved ones, right? If you're not healthy. So super important. Um, okay. Now this is what I want you to hang with me for because we, we got those out of the way, right? Um, this is some, and this is, this came from perspective from, uh, one of my mentors. And I just think it's something that we don't really, um, consider, I guess a lot of times. And that is being thankful for adversity. Uh, we all have adversities, right? We all have adversities. We have challenges, uh, and so we, you know, we know that they're there, and we deal with them, and we overcome them. Uh, but it's it's a different attitude to be thankful for them. Now, why would you be thankful for a challenge? Why would you be be thankful for something that's adversity, something that's difficult in your life? Well, that's how you learn, right? That's how you learn. That's how you become better. That's how you push yourself to uh to get through things is by you you know so without those things in your life you're you're not improving those are what cause you to be a better person to become a better investor to become a better husband or or you know father or whatever uh, or business partner or uh whatever it is 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 by you have those adversities and you don't let them stop you stop you you overcome them Without those, uh, you know, it's just easy to keep going along. There's no reason to get better um, because everything's fine, right? So I, I challenge you to think about this and think about the things that you've been through in your life, maybe something you're going through right now. 
um, that's that's difficult and challenging. And 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 look at it from that perspective and and say, okay, I I'm I'm going to be thankful for this. I'm going to be thankful for this adversity. And here's what this is, adversity is going to do for me when I get through it. Here's how it's going to make me better. Here's how um, I'm going to be able to help other people through this. Whatever that is, find the find the positive in it. Find the you know even if it's not right now, I mean it's in the moment. It's difficult, of course, right? But how is this going to turn around and become better? How for you and make you a better person um, in the end, right? Um, and a lot of times these adver- adversities, they, they bring things to light. They show you maybe that you're on a path that you're not supposed to be on, right? They show you uh, that maybe a different direction that you're supposed to be going, a, a shift you need to make in your business, something like that, right? Um, it's not easy, but but again, good can come through it. And uh, you just you have to look at it with the right frame of mind and the right attitude. And I'm, I'm actually going to read a couple of scriptures here. And if you're not if that's not your thing, I, hey, whatever, that's fine. Um, these are just, they're, I think they're very applicable to what um, we're talking about here with adversity. So um, I'm going to pull them up right here. Uh, this is in James, in, in the Bible, James 1, uh, verse 2. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces uh, patience. So count it all joy when you fall into trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So it's not saying get through it. It's not saying, you know, it's going to get over. It's tough right now. It says to have joy in those times because it produces patience in the end. So there's there's a good outcome from it. Uh, this is another one here. This is in Romans uh, chapter 5. Um, and I'm going to read this whole section here um it says okay so this is uh, romans 5 1 through 4 Uh, therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ through whom we also have the act have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of god so there's the hope part right but then it says and not only that but we also glory so not just in hope, we also glory in tribulations, trials, right? Knowing that tribulations produce perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. So it's talking about that process that you go through when you have those trials and tribulations is that it produces perseverance and then and then builds your character and, and it ends up turning into hope, right? So I, I just thought those were very important and, um, and very applicable to the whole challenge and adversity thing. Um, so hopefully I didn't lose you there. Um, again, those trials, those tribulations, whatever, those challenges, whatever you want to call them, adversities, um, in the end, they're good for you. They're difficult. Life was never promised to be easy and perfect and and without challenge and without uh, pain, right? Uh, that's part of life. But how can you, and, and having the right mindset around those challenges and those adversities is how you can learn those lessons and how you can get through it and uh, become a better person and get that perseverance, right? Um, yeah, if you think everything's going to be perfect and easy, then just stop now because it's not. <laughs> uh, especially when you start pushing yourself to be, be, you know, getting reaching your goals and doing all these things that are beyond what you've done before. It's, it's difficult. It's challenging. Otherwise, everybody would do it. Um, okay, the last thing is, is uh, being thankful for opportunity. And so this is almost the... the um, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to say the flip side of uh, adversity, but oftentimes the best opportunities are found within the challenges and the ad- adversity. And that's and we talked about this. I don't remember which one a, a while back about um, the market right now. The real estate market is challenging. There's there's things that we have to work through. Uh, you know, interest rates have been higher and homes haven't been selling as quickly. And there's a lot of uncertainty moving forward. Uh, and in the economy and the real estate market in general and and so it's like what do you do you just cover your head in the sand and and just you know wait it out and see what happens or do you keep pushing towards your goals and and i'm not saying don't be smart about it you have to you know adjust based on what the economy is doing and based on what you think is coming uh you know down the road here in the next couple years but um it doesn't mean stop it doesn't mean stop pursuing your goals it just means uh look for the opportunities right because the last couple of years were easy in the sense of uh, you bought and you waited and 
prices went up and you made money, right? I mean, you didn't even really have to know what you were doing and you made money, whether that was just, you know, and, and you can make a lot of mistakes. You can make mistakes in a rehab, you can make mistakes mistakes in, in managing your, you know, an apartment building and it really didn't matter because there was enough of upward pressure on re rents and prices and all of that stuff that it, it, was, co it was covering up a lot of mistakes. Uh, so now, now you got to go find some opportunities, right? Now, so it was easy in the sense of making money, but it was actually, but it was also challenging in a different way, right? It was super competitive. Now, now we're facing other challenges in, in a different way, right? But there's tons of opportunity out there in the sense that sellers are more willing to listen. Um, you know, people are going to be in a spot where they need some guidance and some help. Um, you know, if people start losing jobs, they're going to need help with getting out of maybe they can't afford a payment anymore. Um, you know, there, there's room for a lot of you know, creative solutions. And we talk about that a lot with you're stepping in to try to help someone through their situation, not take advantage of them. Right. So um, those challenges, those those challenges in, in the economy, challenges in the market, uh, challenges in your own life, even. I mean, there's that's a lot of times where you find those opportunities. So. Don't stop it and just look at what what are the challenges, what is the adversity, what's what's the negative side of this. Always be flipping that around and say, okay, so here's the challenge. Now where's the opportunity? Because there always is one. There's always an opportunity within a challenge, and that the people that solve those challenges, uh, solve those problems, are the ones that are going to benefit and and make money. And that's how that's how entrepreneurship works. Is you see a problem in the marketplace and you solve the problem and you get compensated for solving the problem. And the bigger the problem you solve, the more you get compensated. It's a wonderful thing. So solve problems and you get paid for it. That's great. Uh, so again, find the challenge, find the adversity, find the problem, and then find the solution for it. Um, and, and, there, and so be grateful for opportunity. There's always opportunity. Um, and that's the thing, there, there is always opportunity. No matter the circumstances, there was opportunity two years ago, there was opportunity five years ago, there was opportunity 10 years ago, there's opportunity today. Uh, you just have to know where to look, you have to know what you're looking for, you have to be clear on what it is you're after and what your goals are and you have to know where to look, where to find it and you have to have the tools to go out there and, and make it happen and put those things together. So um, that's what I got for today. Hopefully this is not too fluff and uh, and it's actually meaningful to you and helpful to you. Be, be thankful, be grateful for your loved ones, be grateful for your health, uh, you know, improve it if you need to. Uh, be grateful for adversity, thankful for adversity and challenges because they make us better and they also provide opportunities that we can uh, turn around and, and find solutions for people and, and make money and build our wealth and, and things like that. So um, don't focus on what you don't have. That's another thing that I wanna just kinda end this with is it's so easy to focus on um, what I don't have. Oh, so-and-so has this and I don't. Um, so-and-so owns this many units and I don't. So many, you know, this person has made all this money and I don't. Whatever it is, it's, it's you know, comparison's the thief of joy, right? So don't look at what you don't have, even if it's something, you're after have that goal okay yeah you don't have it let it drive you but don't focus so much on it that um it depresses you that you're not and, th and that it takes away from what you do have uh you know it's okay to want it's okay to have something drive you that you don't have right now and, and go after it and get it that's great that's fine use that but don't don't use it to the point where you're not seeing what's right in front of you uh and what you should be grateful for that you already have um, that's how we lose loved ones. That's how relationships fail. That's how our health fails. Um, that's how we end up spiraling down, you know, in a mental uh, downward spiral and, and having issues with our mindset and mentality is by uh, ignoring all the great things that we have in front of us and the things that we have to be thankful and grateful for. Um, and we instead focus on what we don't have. Um, so I'm going to leave that there, but I just want, I want you guys to make sure you're focusing on what's the positive, what you do have in your life that, that is a blessing to you. Um, I challenge you to take a couple minutes every day. Um, just, just, you know, journal it, just reflect on it in your mind. It's great to write it down because it helps you remember it, um, and process a little bit more, but find a couple minutes every day to just, just 
sit back and reflect and and remember what you have to be thankful and grateful for because um, you know especially if you haven't done that and especially if you feel like you don't have something to be grateful for or a lot to be grateful for you're gonna find things and it's gonna start changing your your mindset and changing your your outlook on that and, and your attitude will change as well um, so hope you have a great Thanksgiving spend time with your loved ones and family remember what you have to be thankful for uh, and uh, you know focus on on those positive things and let those carry you forward in your in your life and business so thanks again for listening have a happy Thanksgiving and we'll catch you next time Thank you.